The Ghanaian government over the years has been encouraging its youth to focus on entrepreneurship. The Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology focuses on imparting the spirit of entrepreneurship into its graduates. This is no different from the College of Agriculture, specifically the Animal Science Department. The main mandate of the department is to teach, conduct research, and impart knowledge to solve the daily challenges of society. The department has a poultry farm which carries out research into poultry production as well as producing eggs and meat to satisfy consumer demands. The birds produced from the farm are engineered breeder stock. These birds are bred to be more adaptive to the local environment and the offspring are used for commercial purposes. The department is located on the 40 hectare land, which is about one kilometer from the Faculty of Agriculture. The department, as I said earlier, has two sections, the livestock section and then the poultry section. And it has two, three units as well, the hatchery unit, the processing unit, and the microbiology and nutritional laboratory unit. The department is mandated to teach conduct research and extend knowledge in animal production to farmers within the Ashanti region and beyond the region. Uh, basically, as you know, KNUST is a research station. We carry out poultry research and engineering, and then we also do commercial production. Um, on my right here, we have breeder stock. That is basically engineered by KUST research people. What we are doing here is uh, we are incorporating the naked neck gene in the foreign breeds that we know, so that they will be more adaptive to our local environment, that is in terms of heat dissipation, resistance to diseases, and then more productive. And then out of them, we have the offsprings that we, we, we run them for the commercial activities. That is the table eggs that we see in our local markets. The department houses the best hatcheries in the region with ultra-modern equipment. The Olympio hatchery is where eggs from the poultry farm are sent to undergo various hygienic conditions and processed until the chicks are hatched. And this hatchery offers its services to the general public. This is um, the female bird. That is the parent's bed. And then we have the males inside. Um, they are brown, whilst the females are white. Now, when we cross these beds together, the eggs that comes out, and then we hatch them, the offspring that comes out turns the opposite way, having the, the females picking the male colors, and then their male counterparts picking the female colors. So at the offspring level, um, you have the males being white, and then the females being brown. And then the females appear like this, as we normally see on our local market when there are festive activities, when we go to buy beds. So as you can see, now the female is looking brown, but here at the parent session, the, the male is rather brown. So the female is picking the color of the uh, father, and then the males will pick the color of their mothers. Interestingly, the department has a well-equipped meat processing unit where meat from the farms are processed into various healthy finished goods. The breeds of rabbits kept here at the KNUSD Dairy Beef Cattle Research Station are not pure lines. They are mixed breeds. So you pick any particular animal, you may see signs or phenotypic expression as if they are um, New Zealand, California, Flemish giant, but they are not pure lines. So all the rabbits that we have here are mixed breeds and uh, 
not pure line. We are, however, trying to focus on the New Zealand and the California so that we can breed them and have higher uh, percentage of these traits in them because they are prolific, they grow at a faster rate, and the size is much big for commercial production. And these are some of the qualities the rabbit farmers look for whenever they would want to buy rabbits from you. So we try to select some of these animals for breeding for their farm. For a rabbit to be fully grown, um, it takes about um, four to five months to get to maturity. So depending on the breed of animal that you have, the number of animals that are kept together, the quality of feed that is being given to the animal will determine the rate at which the animal will grow. Because if they are, um, there are several of them in a small cage, there will be competition for space, competition for food, which can minimize uh, growth rates. And when the feed given to the animals is also not nutritious, then that would also reduce the rate at which they grow. So nutrition, housing are very key in the growth rate of the animals. If you sell for commercial purposes, do you sell to others? We sell rabbits for commercial purposes. We sell some to consumers, those who would want to buy, slaughter and consume. We also sell to some farmers who would come around, look at the traits of rabbits that are here present at the research station. Then when they are interested in them, they buy them. And where there are a limited stock, they place their order. Then when we multiply the breeds they want, we call them to come. To promote the research activities of the department, it has a dairy, beef and cattle research station where extensive research is conducted into the production of cattle and rabbits. The department plays a significant role in the contribution or in the, in the training out of students in BSc Agriculture. It's a, the faculty runs a composite degree in Agriculture, so animal science is a component that contributes to that. So the first three years, students do courses in all the areas, crops, animal science, horticulture, uh, economics and agribusiness. And when they get to the final year, they branch to options of choice which animal science is one of them. So animal science is enriched with several activities that can assist students to be an entrepreneur right after school. So if a student has animal science background, in the course of the training they receive some kind of training in yogurt production, in raising of birds, and even in processing of meat. So if a student wants to engage in a business, he can apply what he has learned in school in the animal science department and do it on his own than resorting to the government for job. So that makes animal science important to the various, um, to the faculty. The state of animal science in Ghana, I would say that the economic policies and national policies on agriculture has in a way sidelined animal science. All attention is given to crops, crop-based agriculture. And it's, this is evident in the recently enrolled flagship program of the government, which is um, planting for food and job. The attention was on crops. Then recently, when they announced that some attention was given to the livestock sector. So, though animal science has not been given the needed attention, it contributes a lot to the growth of the economy and it contributes about 7% to the gross domestic uh, product. So animal science, in a way, 
support the economy by creating jobs for those especially in the rural folks. And more science again, through its products, ensures nutrient adequacy in the diet of um, the populace. So the role of animal science in the economy cannot be overemphasized. But what I would say is that if um, the need attention is given to it, the economy can grow. In that the importation of only um, poultry products, you're talking about um, 100 million metric tons, which costs about $200 million to the economy. And because of the less attention given to the unit, the production capacity or the output of animal production is not even up to 4 million. And the current state is about 2 million poultry beds produced. The SDG2, which is the Sustainable Development Goal 2, which talks about mitigating hunger and sustainable um, agriculture, and ensuring food security. Animal science can contribute a lot, and animal science also influences the, animal, animal production also influences the SDG2. In that the sustainable agricultural development is influenced by the environment. And when you talk about the environment, it's more of the climate. Animal production, in terms of livestock production, contribute significantly to emissions of greenhouse gases which affect the climate. Their contribution is more or less the emissions of gases through eructation as animal belch and even the manure production which also gives a lot of nitrous oxides and the nitrous oxide and the methane emitted through eructation has a serious effect on the climate which actually causes changes in the climate. And when there is changes in climate, you have unpredictable rains, rainfall receipt, rise in temperature, and what have you. So the livestock component, which causes emissions of greenhouse gases, can also be attended to by doing some strategies which can reduce this emission through the kind of feed that we give to the animals, and also breeding animals that can reduce uh, the emissions of these um, greenhouse gases. So when these emissions are reduced, then it means that the environment can be predicted, the climate can be predicted, and that will help farmers to know when to plant. Because as we speak now, we don't even know when it's going to rain because the climate has changed. Again, when it comes to nutrition or reducing hunger, the livestock section or the animal production unit in the country can contribute to a lot, can contribute a lot to reducing hunger. Because um, when you go to the rural areas, those even in the crop production area also um, raise animals. That is when crop fails, they resort to the use of animals. And production of animals will also ensure nutrition or nutrient adequacy in feed, which can also curtail hunger. Well, um, in animal science department, uh, they can never be an experiment that uh, animals will not be used. Though we can simulate the experiment and take some uh, inocular from the animals to do the experiment, animal issues of welfare concern are raised, even taking the inocular from them. For instance, if you want to evaluate feed staff for nutrient quali feed quality, because you'll be feeding the animals to the feeding the feed to the animals. We should get something from the animals that will ensure that what is happening in the lab reflects exactly what happens in the animal. So in ruminant livestock, we have what we call um, cannulation. That is, you make an incision at the lower abdomen of the animal, in this case cow or um, goat or sheep. So the incision, that is, you cut with a razor blade before you get access to the food which will be used in the lab to assess the quality of feed. And in so doing, you inflict wounds on the animal. So the issues, or issues arise. So 
What we do is that we try to reduce the pain that we inflict on the animal by giving local anesthesia. So the ethical considerations given to animals using this is to kind of reduce the pains that arise in the course of what um, evaluating fish tap. And then issues of their rights is are also concerned that we also attend to. So the university has formed um, animal ethical issues policy that also ensures um, that right things are done. So before you even conduct an experiment, you have to seek an approval from this ethical committee before the experiment is conducted. The research initiative of this department, uh, one of them I will talk of the poultry, where um, one of the scientists um, tried to get omega-3 fatty acids in eggs. So he won um, a grant from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to conduct that experiment so that we can get omega-3 fatty acids in the broilers. Again, um, the department also sought to enhance good practices in animal production. We recently had this um, Fulani issues in Asante Achimagogo and then bringing their cattle all the way from the north and then destroying people's farm. One initiative the department assumed through a grant from CADVET and Skill Development Fund was to train these Fulani guys on further conservation. So um, a team which was led by me developed what they call a hydraulic bale which, will, which was used in building for the for dry season feeding. So that um, in the dry season when feed is limiting, you have conserved feed so the animals would have access to feed. But when you say genetically modified food, it's not necessarily moving into the genome level or attacking the genes or introducing genes to the animal. Any improved activity that will lead to um, improved production con constitutes that. For instance, our local breeds of cows can only give about three to four liters of milk a day. Whereas in other countries, you can talk about 20 to 50 liters of milk a day. So how do we catch up with the rising demand for milk product? One aspect of it is going to the genome level and incorporating a gene that can enhance or ensure high milk yield. Or alternatively, getting the genetic material from animals that produce high milk yield. That is getting the, either the um, semen for artificial insemination activity here or getting a fertilized ovum that is an embryo which will be implanted in the uterus of our local cows here. So the cow will act as a surrogate mother, nurture the embryo and then give forth an offspring which is a calf. So when this calf is nurtured and it grows, it can produce more milk than what the mother is producing. Again, I will switch to uh, plant science because animal, you can never have animal production without talking about plants. No, the, the, the fodder available, the forages available that we feed our animals with are fibers in nature. And because of fiber nature of this, when the animals like ruminants, that like the cattle, sheep and goat ingest, they emit a lot of greenhouse gas because they have a lot of fiber in it. And this greenhouse gas has a deleterious effect on the environment through climate change. So we can reduce the effect by knocking out the gene that encodes for high fiber deposition so that you have a plant which grows with, high, with low fiber. So that when you feed the animals, the emissions of methane as greenhouse gases will be reduced. So all these are um, these genetic bio biotechnological approaches to enhancing animal production in the animal field. The collaborative partners of these departments, we have a lot of them, both locally and internationally. And as we speak now, we have a scientist in Canada who was given the department $40,000 for investment to train women in agriculture. So student, women in agriculture who um, uh, pursues animal science as option are uh, giving grants to the team of 5,000 Ghana cities for their research work. 
we have collaborative partners like institutions in the US, University of Alberta in Canada, University of California, UC Davis in, in the US, and other sister universities in Africa. And locally, we collaborate with other institutions like University of Ghana, UDS, University for Development Studies, and University of Cape Coast. So these are our local collaborators. And in the industry side, we have Akati Farms as our partner, we have Chicks and Chicken as our partner, where we kind of give advice on animal production. Aside from the grant that we get to conduct research, we also conduct research with our students. So when students um, conduct their research and present their dissertation, we advise them to reduce reduce their, their, their work or dissertation to four pages where they are presented at our local seminars. We have what we call Ghana Society of Animal Production. We have Ghana Association of Animal Science. So these are some of the local avenues where our research findings or outputs are presented. Internationally, senior members or staff of the department go for conferences where they are invited as guest speakers and they share their research output with the, with the, with the, with the, with the public. And again, we also invite the media whenever we have an innovation. Recently, we developed a local incubator at the Hatcher unit, which um, is a cheaper source of um, incubating chicks and, and eggs for chicks, or um, the old chicks. We invited the media, we took a coverage of it, and also posted online. So these are the ways that we share our research findings. Animal science is an attractive place to be. And then wherever you are, the department is open to you to apply and be attached to the department. As I told you, um, because it's now difficult getting jobs, you know, training is based on creating entrepreneurs. And in this department, we have several areas where we can get some skills. So that right after school, if you don't have a job, you can resort to that and get your own job. The department prides itself in imparting the culture of entrepreneurship into graduates as well as helping solve the everyday needs of society.